Hi, welcome to Don's Key Tech. I'm going to show you my new project called the Raspberry Pi BME 280 Weather Station using Plus and Python. As you can see in here, this is the weather station dashboard that I have created that will show you the sensor readings coming from my BME 280 sensor. At the top of my page are the current values of the temperature, the humidity, pressure, and relative altitude. At the rightmost part of the page are the current values of the temperature, humidity, pressure, altitude, and gauge chart representation. The gauge chart will tell you if the current readings exceeds a particular threshold. So for example in here, my threshold is 30 degrees Celsius and my current temperature is 27.7. So the threshold value is up by less than 2.3 from the 30 degrees Celsius. So this is a good way for you to check if your temperature reading is exceeding a certain threshold. On the left hand side of my, it's my historical line chart of sensor readings. I am saving the last 12 sensor readings and displaying them as line charts. The user interface automatically updates itself to retrieve the latest sensor readings. So, for example here, I have here my Raspberry Pi 0W and my BME 280 sensor. And if, if I try to touch this BME 280 sensor, then I am assuming that the temperature should change. Currently, it is 27.8 and if I touch the sensor with my index finger, then as you can see, it's now 29.6. And if you look, take a look at the line chart in here, you would notice that the temperature indeed zoomed up. Now, if I remove my, my index finger, then I am assuming that the temperature should go down. So let's see. So, as you have noticed, the temperature did went down and it is being shown here by the historical chart and displayed also at the top, which is the temperature. I used Python and Plus in developing this BME 280 weather station project. Would you like to know how I did this? Then let's start exploring. Before we start, let's discuss a little bit about what the BME 280 sensor is. This was developed by Bosch for mobile and wearable devices application. It is capable of retrieving the temperature, the humidity, pressure, and relative altitude with high accuracy. This table here lists some of the important specifications for this particular sensor. The BME 280 module can use SPI or I2C communication. In my case here, I am using the I2C module, so the usual pinout such as the SEL and SDA pin is present and the power pins B in and ground. For the wiring, I use an, a Raspberry Pi 0W single bird computer and I am using the standard I2C pins of which are the GPIO2 and GPIO3 assigned as SCL and SDA hardware pins. I just connected it with the BME, BMP280, SCL, SDA and the power pins. The following is the overall design of my Raspberry Pi 0W BME280 weather station dashboard. I have created a plus web server inside my Raspberry Pi 0W that will create a web application which is my BME280 weather station dashboard. The weather station periodically requests sensor readings through an HTTP call and when the web server receives this request then it communicates with the BME280 sensor through my Raspberry Pi 0W. The BME280 sensor then re retrieves the readings and then sends it back to my PLUS web server and the PLUS web server will then send back the sensor reading back to the web application weather station dashboard. The weather station dashboard in turn updates its user interface to show the latest sensor readings. 
Now, these are the parts of my weather station dashboard. The important part are the boxes at the top, which displays the current temperature, humidity, pressure, and approximate altitude. The gauge chart is in the right-hand side, and my line chart is in the left-hand side. The sidebar just displays my name, which is then Donskita. Now, let us discuss some code. First, how do we read the BME 280 sensor readings? To read the BME 280 sensor readings, then we use a library called the rpy.bme280. The code is really simple as we just need to declare an SM bus and then passing in the port, which is 1. In my case in here, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 0W. So the port number assignment is 1. Otherwise, it will be 0 for all Raspberry Pi model. And then we just call the load calibration params in here by passing the bus that we created at the top and the I2C address of my BME280, which in this case is 0x76. Next, we sample a reading by calling this BME280.sample and then passing in the bus, the address, and the calibration params that we created earlier. The return value will now contain the following and it's stored in this particular variable, which is data. From this variable, we can extract the value of the temperature, the pressure, and humidity. So let's try this one in actual code. So I'm just going to execute Python, BME underscore BME test.py. And as you can see, this is the value of the temperature, the pressure, and the uh, humidity coming from my BME280 sensor. Next, we talk about the BME underscore module.py. The BME underscore module.py is the representation of our BME280 sensor. As you can see here, I have a class called the BME280 module, which has a class property called the port, the address, which is the 0x76 and the sea level pressure, which we'll be using in calculating the relative altitude later. It then creates some code that we have done already in the BME test.py. So if you take a look at the constructor, I just created the same bus and the calibration params. The method get sensor readings is where we retrieve the readings from our BME280 sensor by also calling the method BME280 sample. And then we retrieve the value of the temperature, the humidity, and the pressure. The additional code in here is the altitude calculation. Using this formula, then we can guess the altitude if we know the current sea level pressure at this time. Just a reminder, this is just uh, an estimate though. I've just copied this one from the BMP 180 data sheets on how to calculate the altitude. And then from these values, we just return a Python tuple of all the values. All these values are then returned back to the calling client, which in this case is our BME280 weather station dashboard. The file is the app.py. The app.py is where we create our plus web server. I have here also the BME280 module, which is initialized at this point. The important part of this file are the routes, which will respond to requests from our browser or our BME280 weather station dashboard. First, the index or the root route will serve as our index.html page. So, this route, which is the root, will serve our index.html, which is in the template folder. Next, the backslash sensor readings route will read the values from our BME280 module by calling the get sensor readings of our BME280 module class. And then it will return a JSON response back to the calling client, which in this case is our BME280 weather station dashboard. The weather station dashboard periodically calls this route every three seconds. The main function here is just used to run our plus application. Now, let's go to the index.html page. The index.html page contains the HTML elements for our project and is used to display the sensor readings. Let us scan the important parts. In the head section, I am importing the box icon, fonts, and the plotly.js that I use to display graphs and chart. The sidebar, 
which in this case is this one. Replace my logo name, which is Donsky Tech, and the name of the current page, which is which is the dashboard. The home content, as you can see in here, which is the home section, contains the boxes. So these are the boxes, which is the temperature, and then the humidity and the pressure. The history chart, which is at the bottom, contains the HTML divs that will display my line chart and also my gauge div chart. They will be populated by the platly.js JavaScript library when it is time to draw the graph or chart. The style.css is our cascading style sheet file and it contains the classes that will beautify our index.html page. I cannot discuss so much about how this CSS work because that is a big topic on its own. But one thing I can say to learn how it works is to comment everything and then I'll comment it one by one starting from the top. There you would see the impact of such tiling on our index.html page. The last and the important file is the main.js file. It initializes all configurations for our graphs. So for example, this is the history, which I call as trace. So temperature trace, humidity trace, which is for the line chart or historical chart, which you can see I initialized by creating the chart by calling the platy that new plot and then passing in the several parameters that we declared at the top. For the gauge data, which you can see in here, it just creates also the gauge data by passing in the several important parameters like the gauge divs and then the temperature data that is declared at the top also. These array variables that you are seeing in here will hold the last 12 sensor readings for each data coming from the BME 280 sensor. I am limiting the number to 12 points so that I, I would only be displaying the maximum of 12 data points. Now, the function update sensor readings is an important function. which will call our wrap slash sensor readings, which you can see also in the app.py, which is the slash sensor readings in here. Using the data retrieved from the calling the slash sensor readings route, then we can extract the values of our temperature, humidity, pressure, and altitude. And then, using those values, we can update our user interface by calling this sub function called update boxes, update gauge, and update charts. We take a look at what this sub function is doing. As you can see in the sub update boxes here, I just update the value of the divs and then changing the inner HTML value. For the gauge chart, I just call the platly.update API function. The same also for the update chart, I just call the platly.update. The last function that you are seeing in here is what we use to automatically trigger a refresh of our page every three seconds. We have a set of two functions in here that will call our update sensor reading at the top every three seconds. That is all for the code. The steps on how to run this project is in, the, in the, is in the description of this video. That is how our project works. If there are any questions or comments, then please ask this in the companion write-up of this video. The companion write-up, the code, and everything are in the, in the description of this video. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!